In 1988, the USA won the bid to host the 1994 World Cup. In action, the USA needed to establish a first division league. Hosting the World Cup and starting a professional league was the perfect start for football in America, but it had a long way to go. In its inaugural season, the MLS was far from perfect. The league dappled with deviations from traditional football in order to Americanize the game. In the 90s in America, football was seen as a foreigner's sport, so the league tried to make it as entertaining as possible to the fans. This led to a bizarre set of rules such as Glenn Glock's that counted down and crazy penalty shootouts. After its first season, the MLS struggled in its finances and its popularity. Test by the inclusion of a few star players like Jorge Campos and Carlos Valderrama, the league had trouble filling stadiums, most of which were American football stadiums. The league lacked quality, and that showed on the domestic stage, as well as the international stage. The US men's national team had an extremely poor performance in 1998 World Cup, with a squad that was mainly made up of MLS players. Between its founding year in 2004, the MLS lost hundreds of millions of dollars. So the MLS made the changes to the rules and structure of the league. The mentality of the league slowly started to change, and it showed in the US's surprising appearance in the quarterfinals of the 2002 World Cup. But the biggest change came in 2007, when the MLS adopted the designated player rule, also known as the Beckham rule. Teams were now allowed to buy players that were typically outside of their salary cap range. This welcomed the incredible transfer of David Beckham. Beckham's transfer paved the way to bigger name players coming into the MLS. His success drew sold out crowds, and the popularity of the sport began to surge again. With the popularity and success on the rise, new teams started pouring into the league. Since 2007, the league has almost doubled with the addition of 11 teams. It was over the past few years when the term retirement league was coined. The MLS saw a major influx of players past their prime, such as David Villa, Pelo, Kaka, T.J. Drogba, Jermaine Defoe, Steven Gerrard, and Bastian Schweinsteiger. But can the MLS be blamed for signing these players? The MLS has made massive strides over the past few years. Without these signings, the MLS would still be very much an inferior league. The recent influx of larger signings has grown the league in quality of play and financial weight. However, the MLS is slowly turning its focus to the development of younger talent. Teams like Atlanta United are a great example for youthful philosophy. And MLS teams are following suit. This past offseason, only five players were signed that were over the age of 30. And even so, you can't blame LA Galaxy for signing a player like Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who will be a catalyst not only for the team, but also the league. As the MLS grows, designated players will become younger. The idea of the MLS being a retirement league still lingers, but it is slowly disappearing. Team like Atlanta, LAFC, Sporting KC or FC Dallas are all showing exciting prospects with young and upcoming squads. For now, the only thing the MLS can do is continue to grow and ignore the haters. So, what do you think? Is the MLS still a retirement league? <laughs>